Imagine that you turn on a light bulb and decide to compare its temperature with the temperature of the air that's next to it. The air next to the light bulb will obviously heat up because it's received some heat from the light bulb. But the bulb in turn will be much hotter because it, after all, gives off heat to the surrounding air. And it cannot heat up hotter than the temperature of the light bulb that heats it, can it? It even sounds stupid. It's obvious that the closer we are to the heat source, the higher the temperature should be. Any student understands this. And why are we talking about such obvious things at all? The reason is that in space, this law does not always work. And if you imagine the sun instead of a light bulb, the air around it will be hotter than the glass of the lamp. The temperature of the atmosphere of our star is higher than the temperature on its surface. And this mystery has kept scientists awake for 50 years. There's a funny prejudice in the mass consciousness of mankind. Thinking about the cosmos and its mysteries, we first of all imagine black holes, distant galaxies, and some kind of dark matter. Purely intuitively, we believe that the space near the Earth is well studied. After all, the solar system, by space standards, is a meter away from us. This means that there will be no more discoveries here. Everything has long been known and even a little boring. But in reality, even our immediate space environment is fraught with many secrets. Moreover, there are plenty of them even in the sun, the most accessible object of the sky for observations. We'll talk about such mysteries of the solar system in the next couple of minutes. First of all, we'll return to the temperature paradox. The surface of the sun has a temperature of plus or minus 5700 degrees Celsius. This is a lot, even enough to easily melt tungsten from a light bulb. It's the surface of the star that we see in our sky. But there, the sun does not end. After all, it also has an atmosphere. This is a complex structure worthy of a separate video. But now we're interested in the mysteries of the sun. And one of them is that the higher you go from the surface of the star, the hotter it gets. First, as you rise in the chronosphere, you'll experience a leap from 5,000 degrees to 20. And then, as you rise to the solar corona, a logic-breaking event will occur. For your thermometer will fix the temperature rise to 2 or even 15 million degrees Celsius. Nice difference, isn't it? It really doesn't fit the logic. The sun's atmosphere is 200 to 300 times hotter than its surface. And strictly speaking, scientists have no answer to this riddle. And by the way, it's hard to see the chronosphere and the solar corona. This can only be done either during an eclipse or by applying special filters. There are several strong assumptions. One of them says that the heating of the atmosphere is achieved by small explosions called nanoflares. Allegedly, plasma periodically escapes from the surface of the sun, and exploding in the atmosphere heats it up. Such super-hot flashes have been recorded by the Eunice apparatus. There is another story which states that the temperature is raised by electromagnetic waves, similar to ones in the sea, which reach their peak strength when they collide with the shore. But we've yet to find the exact answer to this riddle. The same is in the case about the Saturn hexagon. Thanks to the system of rings, the planet is the main fashionista of the solar system. We all know that Saturn is a gas giant, and they have destructive storms rage in the atmosphere. Consider only the great red spot of Jupiter, a huge storm larger than Earth that's been raging for several centuries. And Jupiter itself, with its psychedelic coloring, is the best evidence of the atmospheric activity of gas giants. There are storms on Saturn, too, and it has its own analog of the eye of Jupiter. But unlike him, a huge storm on Saturn has the shape of a regular hexagon, and it's located exactly at the North Pole. For the first time, an amazing phenomenon was discovered by the Voyager spacecraft in 1981. But his images were blurry, and humanity was more pleased with the very fact of the first photographs of Saturn. The hype began when the more modern Cassini spacecraft shared detailed photos in 2004, on which you can no longer get out of the hexagonal storm. Then scientists picked up the Voyager data. Still, it's not every day in space that you find a storm that's been raging for at least a quarter of a century. Later, the Hubble telescope was also sent for detailed images of Saturn, and once again, it confirmed the presence of a geometrically interesting structure. They began to study it closely, having come to the conclusion that the walls of the hexagonal vortex go down the atmosphere to a distance of up to 100 kilometers. And the unusual shape does not prevent the formation from rotating synchronously with the rotation of the deep layers of Saturn while not collapsing. Strictly speaking, we still do not have an exhaustive explanation of the phenomenon. In the Oxford Laboratory, 
they seem to be simulating the atmosphere of Saturn in a bucket of water, and by placing artificial vortices there, they achieve the formation of triangles, squares, and hexagons. But why the same thing happens on Saturn remains a mystery to us. Planets on the outskirts of the solar system are generally remarkable. Take for example Neptune. It's the furthest from the Sun of all the confirmed full-fledged planets. How much do you think it receives heat from the star? Obviously the least. This again brings us back to the analogy of a light bulb and the air around it. If we take the distance of the Earth from the Sun as a unit of distance, then Neptune is 30 times farther away. Its nearest neighbor, Uranus, is a third closer and only 20 times farther from the Sun than our Earth. This is important because often, Neptune can be seen in the list of mysteries precisely in comparison with Uranus for some characteristics. We're talking about the amount of heat the planets return to outer space. Logic dictates that the further a planet is from the Sun, the less heat it receives. And consequently, less heat can also be returned to space. However, in a pair of Uranus-Neptune, this rule does not work. Despite the fact that Neptune is a third further from the Sun, the planet itself is not particularly colder than Uranus. On both planets, you can meet temperature of about minus 200 degrees Celsius. Moreover, the atmospheric activity of the more distant Neptune is even stronger. There, on the most distant planet, the strongest winds, which can reach transonic speeds, rage. Which, however, is logical, because we're talking about a gas giant, or ice, as it's customary to call Uranus and Neptune in modern research. The bottom line is that neither Uranus nor Neptune has a solid surface, mountains, hills, and any obstacles that slow down the winds. So they blow on gas giants with great speeds. But why the strongest ones are on Neptune, which, in theory, should be an icy dead world due to its distance from the Sun. We can also add to this oddity the fact that in reality, Neptune gives off more heat into space than it receives from the Sun, and much more. For every unit of solar energy, the eighth planet in the solar system returns 2.6 units. This again breaks the logic, because in theory, we're discussing an ice world with a temperature of minus 200 degrees, which is further than Uranus. And the planet, in turn, gives into space plus or minus as much as it receives from the Sun. How is this even possible? Why does a planet that is a third further from the star than Uranus have more thermal activity? This is how many news portals formulate the riddle. But in reality, things are a little more complicated. The real mystery to scientists is why Neptune even has so much thermal activity. There are many theories about this. Some claim radioactive processes within the planet. There are hypotheses about the unaccounted-for gravitational influence on Neptune, including the mysterious ninth planet. There are even exotic suggestions about warming rains of diamonds. The simulations do show that under Neptune's pressure and temperature conditions, methane can break down into molecules. When the carbon is released, it will find its relatives and will form carbon structures similar to diamonds. They, in turn, are quite heavy and will begin to sink into the hot mantle of the planet. There, when high temperatures are reached, they will evaporate and start the cycle over again. And supposedly, the heat released in the process warms the planet. This topic is very interesting, but actually, it's not a mystery. To understand this, let's go back to the numbers of the gas giants. Jupiter is closest to the Sun, with a cloud temperature of minus 145 degrees. It gives off twice as much heat into space as it receives from the star. It's followed by Saturn with a temperature of minus 178 degrees, which also gives off twice as much heat into space as it receives from the star. Next is Uranus, where temperatures drop to minus 224 degrees. And Uranus gives off as much heat as it receives. Well, Neptune, in turn, gives the same plus or minus 200 degrees. And again, return into space twice as much heat. Do you catch the trend? The further away the planet, the cooler it is. But heat is returned to space by all, plus or minus, in the same way. It's not Neptune that is out of sequence and is a mystery. It just works according to the scheme of Saturn and Jupiter, giving back twice as much heat. How he gets it is none of our business now. It is important that it is Uranus that looks like a mystery in the sequence. For some reason, it's much colder than it should be. And here, scientists have no answer. There's only an assumption that this is somehow connected with another mystery of Uranus. All the planets of the solar system resemble spinning tops. Some are tilted more strongly, some spin faster. But the angles of inclination of the seven planets lay between 0 and 30 degrees. The most straight is Mercury, 
rotating at an inclination of less than a degree. The most crooked is Neptune, with a rotation angle of 30 degrees. But Uranus excelled here too. The planet is tilted 98 degrees and actually spins lying on its side. No one else in the solar system has been noticed for such laziness. And in turn, scientists cannot explain why this is so. There is a theory about a collision with a large celestial body that overturned Uranus. There's a theory of the influence of gravity, and all of them have both pros and cons. Also, there's an itchy feeling that Uranus's insane tilt is connected to the mystery of its coldness. Perhaps Uranus cannot heat itself because at one time it collided with a satellite, fell on its side, and in the process released all the energy. We've yet to solve this mystery, but it's also possible that everything would be easier. Many scientists believe that Uranus is simply older than Neptune and has already used up everything it could. There's also suggestions that ice giants have cycles of activity, and we just simply met Neptune at an active moment and Uranus at a calm one. Whatever the answer is, these riddles highlight how little we know about the solar system. And this knowledge is important, because the laws of physics and chemistry work in the same way on all planets. And having understood the reasons for the formation of winds on Neptune, we'll be able to better understand the earthly ones. Well, let's finish our issue with riddles of Ceres. It's the largest asteroid dangling between Mars and Jupiter, and at the same time, the smallest of the dwarf planets. Ceres is smaller than a third the size of our moon, and smaller than half the size of Pluto. But that doesn't stop her from driving astronomers crazy. And only because according to calculations, there is more water hidden on a tiny planet than on our Earth. By some estimates, water makes up 50% of Ceres' mantle. That is, somewhere inside there flows a huge ocean which periodically breaks out. The NASA Dawn probe studying the planet first detected bright white spots. And additional data showed that in this place there is a release of water vapor with an intensity of 3 kilograms per second. In other words, there is a kind of geyser eruption. There are theories about the volcanic activity of Ceres, and even that it came to its current place from somewhere in the distant borders of the solar system. And it's not about some distant quasar or black hole. We're talking about a celestial body very close to us, to which we have even flown. Nevertheless, even Ceres had so many mysteries that scientists will have enough for a couple of generations. This emphasizes, for the thousandth time, how far we are from statements about the full knowledge of not only the solar system, but at least the asteroids and planets closest to us. So space and its studies are far from boring activity. There's space here for millions of discoveries on an epochal scale. We can only hope that in our lifetime we'll find a couple of them. Well, for now we have everything for you to share. If you liked the video, let us know in the comments. And along the way, ask a question about space, which we'll try to answer. Until we meet again, friends.